Hello and welcome to this discussion about angle versus tube when it comes to food processing equipment. My name is Doug and I'm here with Chad and Steve from IME. So we're going to talk about angle versus tube in the food processing equipment. When you design a piece of equipment, you have a choice. Why would you use each one? The downfalls and the positives of each one. First of all, we'd rather build it out of tube. I would agree with that. It, yeah. it, why would you rather? Well, well tube's the hardest aside tube from point. sanitary design. Cool. From a practical standpoint and a fabrication point of view. We love it when we can just build it out of square, square tube because tube it's is. stronger. Stuff holds better. It's, you know, it's more sturdy, right? Tube is. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's easier to cut mm -hmm. and have square corners come together. And mm -hmm. It looks good when it's done, usually. Yeah, but understanding sanitary design, and it's especially in the USDA um, meat packing plants, it's like a no-no. Mm -hmm. You cannot use uh, square tubing. And so we have to rethink, you know, we have to... So in meats, you can't use square tubing? Hardly at all. Even mm -hmm. handrail is, is angle. Oh, okay. Right. Okay, so, so tell me the difference now. Because I always thought tubing was round. It is. So, yeah, square tubing... Well, it's round and square. Oh, okay. When you talk about tubing, then, we're talking about square and round. Square and round, yes. Okay, and angle, yes. then, is just a piece of metal that's angled. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. cool. Okay. And angle iron is, is, is a structure. So it's, it's thin on the edge. It gets stronger in the middle. It's thicker, and then it goes back thinner. So it does have some structural angle iron does. What, what it's caused us to do, though, this very problem, like saying with a conveyor, this sanitary design is we'll cut a flat pattern for legs, structure, members, and then bend it to give it strength. And so that's what's caused us to do that, so that there's not tube. But the real problem with tubing, either square or round, is that it's hollow. Usually, I think I could say not usually, always, when, it, when something hollow leaves here, it will be completely welded, mm -hmm. seal welded. In my studies, that's what they said, if you use tubing in sanitary design, it has to be completely fill welded, seal, seal so welded. there is no pockets for bacteria. You exactly. can't collect any moisture or mm -hmm. anything like that. Exactly. The problem comes though is you don't know what might happen down the line. Someone might change that piece of equipment or drill a hole in it to, to mount an electrical bracket. Or oh yeah. Now you have a a place for water to get in, and where there's water and, and food particles, then now you've got a perfect. Uh, environment for bacteria growth. We we and we we always say, well, we welded, we seal welded that. And but the problem is, we've done some demo projects where we'll demo an old deck that's got square tubing in it. And in these food plants, they'll use high pressure water, mm -hmm. and I mean they they clean high pressure. It's three hundred pounds of water, three to six hundred psi of water on something. Uh, it's going to find the hole and. We've cut into some decks that water just come gushing out of the legs, completely full when we demo some some equipment. That's kind of concerning, though. Can you completely fill it? Is that possible so there's no leaks? I'd say no. You can't guarantee it because you don't know what's going to happen down the line. As good as we are, there it's possible to get a little pinhole yeah. in a weld that you or can't even see. A stress crack. Or a stress crack. There's something that could happen that would uh, allow water to get inside that tube. Mm -hmm. And so t the, the cure to that problem is just don't ever use tube. Mm -hmm. it's, just don't use it. Just don't use it. So you can completely take it out of the design. Right. That, and so, mm -hmm. and so, that's tough sometimes when you're talking big structure too. Mm -hmm. Because the angle is not as, not as not, strong. Not as strong. So how do you overcome that then? If you if you uh, if you're going to use angle because tube mm -hmm. has the potential of having bacteria grow or water things like that how do you and the angle's not strong enough well then what you fabricate something so we either build our own I beam I beams mm -hmm. are strong and a lot of times with stainless that's what we have to do is build an I beam because you can't buy them or we can use a channel iron channel iron works good um, yeah that's you know a three sided piece oh okay that's got an open side so there's no uh, 
enclosed area. Mm -hmm. Does the thickness of the metal make a difference? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. yeah, the thicker it is, the stronger. The stronger yeah. it is. So how do you determine? If you're going you're to angle it because you know that's best for sanitation, but how do you determine the thickness then of the metal that you're going to need and where to place it mm -hmm. and how does all these components come together? Well, kind of at this point, it's a lot of it's just experience, especially with conveyors because we've built so many conveyors, we just kind of know what works. There are calculations you can analyze material in a, a welded structure to make sure it's strong enough. And then we have software that helps with that. We can run the calculations to see what kind of load it can hold. And if it needs to hold a thousand pounds per square foot or whatever, we can, we can factor that in the design and, and run the program to check it. And so then it'll tell you, use this gauge steel or... Well, you can see the weaknesses, right. so you'll add add something here oh. or there as an uprace or, or something like that. So how does 3D design apply in this then? Because usually the tubing and the angle iron is for handrails, legs. Mm -hmm. When you're doing this with your 3D design, are you able to then take a look at that material and, and make it work mm -hmm. and then the right. customer can see it? Is that? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it'll tell you all the specs that you need in order to, to construct it so it'll work for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you couldn't, if you didn't have AutoCAD, the 3D software, it would be very difficult to design this way. You mm -hmm. know, the old, the old timers seen it on a print, and and you know the, that's why they would build stairways out of uh, channel iron and square tubing, big heavy, big heavy stuff, uh, and then they'd have to lay out every stair, you know, um, or a conveyor. They would just start with square tubing and build a frame and then put some bearings on it and, and it was all stand back and say well this might work yeah well, we better change this or well, change the, that and, and the easy way to do it really is to just overbuild it yeah or overbuild it yeah a lot of stuff a lot of stuff got overbuilt but the problem with that is it it just costs more mm -hmm. uh, so the over, material costs overbuild more. means they just made just, it really strong just made it. <laughs> <laughs> so strong, there's no way it's going to fail. Yeah, but does not necessarily mean it's sanitary. Oh no, no. it wasn't yeah. sanitary at all. Two issues when it comes to sanitary is the the surface in which the food actually contacts, mm -hmm. and then the other areas like the legs and the handrails, stuff like that, where it doesn't necessarily come into contact, but can it can also contaminate the food if it. If it accidentally comes in contact, or somebody touches it, then yeah. touches the food, and yeah, I mean, there's I mean, that's how it happens a lot. I think is by just people touching hands, mm -hmm. touching mm -hmm. one place yeah. and then touching another place. Mm -hmm. We had an issue down at one of the plants that uh, the floor drains covers were fabricated in a way where they weren't seal welded, so there's a lot of gaps and stuff that uh, bacteria was able to grow in, and that bacteria would actually migrate and work its way up onto the equipment where uh, there it gets splashed by the spray the guy's cleaning and then the the conveyor leg was built in such a way that it could harbor that yeah it so it started in the floor drain but it creep up inside the made tubes. its way to the tube oh, yeah. and then there was a place for it to to hold on to it. hold on in the in the it's leg. dark and wet mm -hmm. and it just loves it. And so what would happen is they have uh, the QA people would come with their white Q-tip, you know, I talk about all the time, and swab the, the legs on the conveyors and they would fail. Because? Because they had bacteria in them. Because they, they were using tubing. Although that was yeah. your, that's your, you said that is your favorite to use <laughs> <laughs> because, of, because of the strength, but not because of sanitary. It doesn't work. Right for mm -hmm. sanitary design. And at this point, there still are a lot of conveyors and equipment out there that were made out of tubing. Uh, for a time, it was great because mm -hmm. uh, ignorance was bliss. You know, yeah. we, we didn't really know <laughs> mm -hmm. that that was a problem. Mm -hmm. But it's been about 15 years or so that mm -hmm. I really try to avoid using any kind of a tubing. Does it make a difference on the type of food? Because, like, we're in potato country, oh, sure. country. It does. And, you know, I would yeah. imagine that they're moving potatoes out of the field. That's not sanitary equipment. We're talking about processing, dehydrating. Mm -hmm. And it depends on the facility. And what it, what determines it is if the food's ready to eat. 
or if it gets cooked, if there's a cook process yeah. after it leaves that point. And potatoes always get cooked. They yeah, get we fried. We actually uh, just built some conveyors, and we did use square tubing frames because, again, it's just so much easier to work with. But it's for raw potatoes right out of the field. Some of this equipment literally was washing equipment to wash the dirt off. It's not such a critical deal at that stage of processing. Because it's going to go into a great big storage unit. Yeah. And they call those potato and warehouses. It's not, yeah, it's, spud cellar. Yeah, spud cellar. It's not even when they're we're, when they're done with what they're doing in that process. It's not clean. It's not fit to eat yet. So you go from that process to the process where we were working on a line where the it's a ready to eat um, spiral. You know that's the only one I can really relate to. And even the clothes that you wear when you go into the room when they're in production protects you from outside contaminants. And that's where, you know, there was the biggest concern of bacteria because it gets put in a box and shipped out to the store and people buy it and eat it right away. And so there's no cook process. And so it has to be very clean, very clean. So sanitary design is like at the height. Mm -hmm. And that's in the, in the food. But then like meat though, do you guys do much for meat? We've done that's another uh, kettle of fish. And that, yeah, that one you have to, I mean, we built some decks for them. And I never thought we'd build handrails out of angle iron, but we do. They're, they're, they cannot have a closed tube, uh, okay. round or square. And so, and that's anywhere in the process. Anywhere. Anywhere. anywhere the whole so plant. So everything is angled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's yeah. In the, and uh, everything has to be tabbed. Um, so what do, you mean by, what do you mean by tabbed? Well, uh, to, to bring stair treads together or where sheet metal meets, you have to, if you're not able to seal weld it all the way, you just weld it ever so often and cut it to where there's a gap that can be washed through. Because when I watched them put together the conveyor, uh, you designed it so that it looked like jigsaw pieces. Yeah, puzzles coming together. Mm -hmm. Is that's, that what you're talking about? Yes. Kind of? uh -huh. that's yeah, a that, tab. that really serves two purposes, though. That's kind of a neat, a neat deal. We make it so that there are slots and tabs that fit together. Uh, so you can't put it together wrong, but at the same time, you're only welding that little tab part. So there's a lot less welding. The tab is usually longer than it needs to be, so it ends up making a big gap between the two pieces that are joined. And that gap is what you want so you can clean through it. Oh, yeah. yeah so you don't want it snug. It doesn't harbor anything. Yeah. yeah. So you, you leave a little gap, and so really it's those tabs in that you really mm -hmm. have to worry about. So mm -hmm. on this one here... The tabs are seal welded, though. But the, yeah, oh, but there's no... Weld weld them all the way around. done seal welding that tab. And it's not that sides. much welding. It's, and they'll weld the whole thing, and there's no... It seal welds it. Usually it's a pretty close to 100% weld where there's no gaps and there's no places for bacteria to get in there. So back to the meat plant then. So you did everything in angles. So you guys actually bent that? Is that what you... No, we used you, structural, structural angle. Okay. But you yeah, did, like you I said, bent a lot of we have bent some of it. But the structural angle, and so it, there's just a little more work in coping it and making it you know work no sharp points yeah. for hands to get cut on. And so is this all out of stainless? Yeah. Yeah. Generally, uh, stainless and sanitary design for food go hand in hand. Yeah. <laughs> I know they've approved uh, titanium, except who can afford it? Well, that and aluminum, <laughs> what you find with aluminum or titanium is the cleaning uh, solutions that they use, the chemicals that they use, actually eat the aluminum. Aluminum used to be great. I, I used to make a lot of parts out of aluminum until the the cleaning procedures changed in the factory. They use more chlorine, I think, now than they used mm -hmm. to. Now aluminum's out. You, it just, just eats it away. It, and if it's anodized aluminum, if it's an anodized aluminum, which is a coating that they'll they'll anodize it to, it's like a kind of almost like a powder coat, right? Yeah. An anodized. It's just the process. Yeah. A lot of aluminum is anodized. Well, that chemical just eats that off and it starts chipping and then you got problems because now you that's getting into the food, yeah. the chip. Oh, yeah, yeah. The chip. Plus it leaves a pocket. It oh, yeah. It, bacteria. Pocket. Oh, yeah. It's a real rough surface that can 
Well, it's real hard to clean and contract mm-hmm. bacteria. And it's funny because even the suppliers of, of uh, buyout parts like uh, gearboxes and motors and things, they're like, oh, it's anodized, it'll be fine. <laughs> no, it won't. <laughs> and they're like, oh, no, it's been tested. Well, not at this. You know, we have to put our foot down and say, no, that's not what we need, you know, because we know what them chemicals will do to that material. Yeah. So you just touched on another part of this because we're just talking about, you know, angle versus tube. It really starts with you guys knowing what you're doing. Yeah, what so, works and what doesn't. Yeah, so even the guys who own the food processing equipment, they may not know mm-hmm. what works. They just know they need a piece of equipment. Oh, sure. It's going to move, mm-hmm. you know, these potatoes from here to there and it needs to be sanitary, mm-hmm. but they don't really understand all the FDA rules. We just went, as you know, we just went to the um, PAC Expo there in Vegas and you know walking around looking at some of the equipment Steve and I were like oh that's not sanitary that's not sanitary that's not gonna work <laughs> a lot of these engineers and the plants don't understand it until it's a problem until there's QA people are going hey this ain't passing the swab everyone's got a lot to learn on it you know you say well we got a lot of experience on it we're still learning you know we're still learning every job we learned something on, well, we shouldn't, should do this better next time or this, you know. But every plant's different, though. Oh, yeah. That's why and, they and come that's to you the guys. You kind of have to set your brain, okay, this is a spud plant. They don't need it. They don't need it this good. Mm-hmm. Or this is this is a meat packing plant. We got to bring our A game, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, the potato plants are, are changing. You go in some of these potato plants that have old equipment and you can't believe how rough and rusty and put stuff back in that looks like that. No. It's always yeah. stainless and yeah. a lot of times it's you know truly sanitary design. Well I've spent some time, well one evening, on one of those great big farms up in Mud Lake this year, mm-hmm. riding on the tractor, getting the potatoes, mm-hmm. they put me in the truck, took mm-hmm. me into the big spud cellar mm-hmm. and they have quite a bit of technology in those cellars oh, nowadays. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they were they were taking pretty extra care. I mean, it was their equipment was old. And the guy that was giving me this grand tour that night was saying, you know, we should up, update our equipment because he is showing how it's rough on the potatoes, causes bruising, all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. I did think about you guys could build equipment that would make that process easier for them. That's mm-hmm. part of what you do. Uh, just understanding what the customer's needs are, I think that's the biggest thing. What we have found, and I've said this before is it's pretty tough to take that old equipment that was built back in the day and make it sanitary. You know, it's yeah. it, it, because the sanitary design starts uh, with the design and from coming up with the concept and what they need, figuring in those designs and the sanitary design starts when at the beginning of concept. It's very difficult to take an old piece of equipment and make it work. I mean, you could, some of these plants too, I mean, you walk in, they've been in there a long time. Mm-hmm. So you can't just like say, that's tubing, let's cut it here, mm-hmm. put angle on. Mm-hmm. You can't it do doesn't that. Work. It doesn't work. No, it's, and it's cheaper just to start over, really, because uh, you can band-aid it forever and still have a, a problem, <laughs> you know. But, I guess as soon as you make a connection, you're going to have sanitary issues. And we're building some equipment right now for a potato plant, and we're really trying to be careful of what gets still welded, what gets, you know, and, and make it more sanitary. Because mm-hmm. they are, the they're, everyone's moving more in that direction. And it all comes down to at the end of the day, no food plant wants their name in the news. They, and that they got all these people sick, you know, that, that's Absolutely. like number one priority of the, they don't get anyone sick. Oh, yeah. That could be the end of their business. Oh, sure. Yeah, it could give them such... I mean, look what happened. You know, well, well I can think of Chipotle mm-hmm. was one that I yeah. can think of. that We had the peanut one. Wasn't there a peanut there, factory? There was a peanut factory that I think someone went to prison. Yeah. That. Wow. Yeah. It's important to understand, here's where you use angle, here's where you use two oh, man, yeah. It, and that's what's brought it to forefront is not getting... not contaminating the food you know mm-hmm. you know that's why it's so important to select the right fabricator mm-hmm. and the right designer to do these projects because you got one conveyor one piece of equipment that's causing the bacteria problem and it infects the whole process the whole plant you mm-hmm. know yeah because that stuff travels fast mm-hmm. yeah what's your advice then on choosing a good fabricator 
we've been talking about this. This is just one little aspect. One, just the tubing versus angle. How do you make that choice? That's a good question. I this guess just just uh, understanding the fabricator's experience. I think that's mainly it. Is experience and attention to detail in a food plant uh, and attention to detail. Also references. To I've had plants ask about other contractors, you know, if they have experience in that. Your reputation, I think, is huge, too, you know, as a contractor. Understanding that we have plenty of satisfied customers that we solved these issues for, solved problems for. But now's a good time to toot your own horn, right? Well, yeah. Because, I mean, because yeah. you guys have, I mean, you've been around 26 years. Yeah. And so you've gone through, you know, hey, we're going to make something and... It's just for the potatoes or digging them out of the field, all the way to the most delicate type food, the mm. meats and all that mm. kind of stuff. So you've you've learned over the years. Mm. So they could actually call and talk with you. Oh yeah, I think a conversation, a even a site visit, we'll go see what they got going on, and usually it all makes sense. We can come up with a solution to help them once we see their process what they're trying to accomplish, what are the problems they're having. I was going to ask too, Steve, we've solved a lot of problems with bacteria. And I don't really know the full process like you. Uh, did it solve it for good? Were we, able, were we, were we successful in, in solving a bacteria problem for good and not ever have that problem again? Well, I doubt it. Um, there are just so many nooks and crannies you know, in any process, in any factory, there's opportunity. Anywhere you look, I'm sure there's opportunity for bacteria growth. But really, the best we can do, and what, what we do, is we just try to reduce the probability by anything that we build to put in there is going to be better than what was there. And it's just a continual improvement. And so it's just reducing the probability that they're going to have a problem. Because even with angle... Like you mentioned, if you drill a hole in the tube, or it was you, Steve, yeah. and the, the amount of box on it, now you have, have a problem. Even with angle, they drill a hole in it because they want to hang something, and they put a little bolt there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now they have a the problem. And that's a place where bacteria yeah. can be hard. And if you don't have a spacer behind what you're bolting on there, mm -hmm. you can't wash through it. Now there's a two surfaces. Two surfaces touching. Touch, touch, but are not sealed. So do yeah. you guys uh, do education with... The the processors, the people say, because they come to you and they, they, hey, we need something, and you have to oh, go yeah. in and say, uh, yeah, this is what you need. We can do what you want, but you guys need to understand what you're, yeah, what you're asking is a lot different than what. what There's been about. more than one time on a walkthrough. I'll be like, you don't want to do that because it's going to grow bacteria here, and they'll be, oh yeah, and, you know, they, oh yeah, you're right, you know, and so we'll suggest things, maybe turn them in a different direction. There's no way that the fabricator can really understand all the things that need to happen in sanitary design mm -hmm. because you don't have a way of actually setting one up mm -hmm. and then cleaning it repeatedly day after day after day after day so that you can say, okay, this is where we're having the problems. You set it up and you do the best you can and then next time you learn from it and so forth. Mm -hmm. Is that an accurate mm -hmm. statement? And I think yeah. too, like you, you touched on it, Steve, um, being able to clean it making it so where they can wash all that bacteria off every day because that's that's what they mm -hmm. they clean every night usually right. or every time they well, change processes in a usda facility i think it it's uh they need to do a clean cleanup process every 24 hours yeah. in a non-usda i don't think they have to do it as often but i think a lot of places do anyway just because that's kind of mm -hmm. a standard so making it so it can be washed through, cleaned every day, gets that keeps that bacteria away. That's pretty hardcore. I mean, that's when you talk about designing something, you're going to be spraying down with mm -hmm. high pressure yeah. and with chemicals a, every day. That's a whole other issue too. Is how do you make your stuff stand up to that much water? Uh, yeah, day mm -hmm. yeah, in the day out in the high in the high pressure water. I've seen NEMA four electrical boxes full of water. A four is a the highest. Um, I, I think so. NEMA 4X, I think. Yeah, is, is the highest rating for yeah, keeping water so. out. And, and it's I've full seen, of water? Oh, yeah, I've seen them full of water. They just because they just blast it with yeah, high pressure just, and it's just... Yeah, it gets that 600 PSI or 300 or whatever. <laughs> wow. 
Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's it's been an exciting adventure for me, you know, just learning the sanitary design. And I worked with Steve first before he worked for us oh. as contractor. And, you know, we worked together on a lot of stuff mm-hmm. and solved a lot of problems. You know, and I used to joke around that those guys with the white Q-tips were my favorite <laughs> people because they created so much work for us um, but it, it all made sense what we were doing and why we were doing it yeah. because your history you started in the beverage industry mm-hmm. which that's a whole nother oh yeah that's clean 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 clean, yeah. clean but mm-hmm. still you're dealing with tubes then because mm-hmm. it's got to be a challenge like mm-hmm. how do you keep that sanitary yeah, and I think I think once you understand the concept, you know, just some of the things like angles and square tubes and tabbing things together, um, it really, once you understand, you can identify problems or things that are going to work really quick. Yeah, it doesn't take long. Does no, it? it doesn't. You can see it and you're like, oh, well, that's not going to work. Or, hey, that's going to clean real well. So it's been fun to learn, you know, that process. And there's a, I seen a meme the other day. You know, because I see it, I, it's a, as a fabricator, everywhere you go, you're looking at stuff that's built, right? And I seen a, a meme that uh, showed somebody standing, looking at this pretty waterfall, and there's mountains and things. And it says what I, what, uh, I see, um, and it's the mountains and the waterfall. What I see as a welder, and, and there's a handrail with a bad weld right there on the handrail. <laughs> you know, and that's what I'm looking at. <laughs> not the not the waterfall yeah, it's like, the scenery. <laughs> how did they get away with building such a crappy handrail here? You know, and and so we see it every day. And it's like I ain't walking on that. Do you see the welds? You know, uh, but it's just something that um, gets seared into your brain, and you. But that's what you what they want you to do. Oh yeah, in this industry, they want you to be able to walk in and go. Wow, there's mm-hmm. problems here, or wow, what a good piece of equipment you have. Yeah, I, either way, they want you to I be think either Steve or I could walk into a factory, say someone's got a problem with some bacteria and they want us to come look at it. We could walk in and identify the problems real quick. Pretty quick, yeah. yeah Excellent. I think so. Both of us, either one, just going in and looking, well, here's your problem, you've got to change this. We've had a lot of experience at this. Really? I mean, we, for a, a couple of years, it, Mm-hmm. It seems like all we did was yeah. repair, fix problems. Yeah. We yeah. didn't really design new stuff. We just tried to yeah. fix and other people's fix problems. Other oh, problems. Yeah. That's got to be a pain. Because and, 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 and I mean, I remember one on the flour tortilla line, okay? And it was so funny because uh, we took this belt off that all this dough is coming across and going right into the uh, proofer. You're talking like dough you bake. It's oh, like, yeah. It, it, yeah. It's, it's, it's tortillas, <laughs> but it's the round ball first. Yeah. And we, we took the belt off of that thing, and we put, for whatever reason, there was a foam pad. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. And and it we soaked with water. Yeah, it would get soaked with water and flour every night when they cleaned. <laughs> and so we peeled that thing back, and it was like a whole new city colony of bacteria. <laughs> we, we were just like, oh, oh no. <laughs> what happened? Stink. Oh, oh, it was bad. And and here's the food. But this food came right across that for months. Steve got right on the computer, went to work designing something different that was going to work differently. And we fixed that problem. And it that could have been a huge problem if it if it would have ever got anyone sick or had that um, bacteria. But that was a bad one. <laughs> But the other thing, and this is changing too, it used to be, well, any baking process has historically been unbelievably bad. <laughs> you can find green things growing because there's a lot of flour. And oh, flour grows bacteria so fast. And, oh, uh, really? A when lot it gets of wet. used to be made out of carbon steel, so mm-hmm. rust, mm-hmm. and then flour, and then water, and it was has traditionally been just awful stuff. Yeah. But the thing that saves it is the final step is it goes through an oven. Oh, okay. And then it gets put okay. in a microwave when you fry it. When you, yeah. So that's what's been 
that's what saved that industry, I guess, is just the fact that it gets cooked. Yeah, because it gets and sterile. And in this uh, Again. tortilla process, it was the same thing. The last thing that happened was the tortillas went through an oven, what they call a kill step. But that's changing. The kill step is now not really being accepted as as a solution to the problem. Yeah. No, not when you can peel it back and you can actually see well, it. Well, and just it back uh, saying, well, it'll be fine, it's going to get cooked anyway. You can't say that anymore. Yeah. It's got to be fixed. So there's, yeah, the problem gets fixed before it goes through that. I mean, I remember that. bakery equipment that new stuff would be carbon steel, but no more, not, not mm-hmm. anymore. Yeah. Bakery equipment is, I think they have a long ways to go. They do. That industry just never did. Because I know, like we've talked about in the meat industry, in the processing industry, mm-hmm. I mean, they watch it close. It's, well, and, well, we just did a job at a bakery where we had to replace a deck. I don't know if it was the FDA that regulates yeah, bakeries, but that's right. they were requiring them to unscrew the deck plate and pick the deck plate up off the frame. And clean it. Clean under it. And it was a carbon steel frame. Every oh, night. Oh, really? Did that happen? Every night. They had to do it every night, and it was costing them tons of money. And, it, and they had this problem. They didn't know how to fix it, uh, you know, and there, there are tons of man hours the pulling that stuff just off. to take the screws out. That's what they had to do. Have, have people spend hours and hours taking this thing apart so they could clean it, mm-hmm. put it back together, and so they could go back to work. Mm-hmm. Wow. So we went in and built them a sanitary deck that doesn't have to be taken apart. Yeah, you can wash and clean. They just spray it down. And they're yeah. good to go. Mm-hmm. And and oh man, they were tickled pink. And it, and it's one of those things where someone hears this and and they're like, well, geez, what do I do? Well, we can come in and do an evaluation. We can assess your problems and identify areas that you need to work on or fix. You know, that's what we could do. And a lot of times it's fabricating something different. But we're more than willing to go to your facility and take a look around, see what can be fixed. You yeah. know, it's, it's pretty easy to identify the problems. This particular problem with the aluminum deck, it was just setting flat on a squared tube. Yep. And so there's a there's a pocket there mm-hmm. where bacteria just grows, mm-hmm. and and it migrates. Oh yeah. I, that's one thing we don't realize is bacteria. It likes moves. to move. It likes right? to grow and spread out. Mm-hmm. And that's the biggest issue. Final word, Steve. Angle two. <laughs> Angle every time if it's food. <laughs> every time if it's food. So basically, they need to come and talk to you guys and say, let's look at what you're doing. Mm. Then you can determine angle is sanitary, tube is structural. You may not be using it in a sanitary condition, mm-hmm. so it would be fine. Yeah. The problem is, is uh, structural tubing, say smaller stuff, has been used to fabricate conveyors. The, the thing that's closest to the food mm-hmm. and, and that's where you can't do that yeah. um, and so you know it used to I mean I remember seeing a belt running on square tube you know the food belt and and so can't do that anymore and and so you got to use something different solid plastic you know for yeah. wear strips mm-hmm. that the plastics actually the whole support or you know those kinds of things and, and get that structural steel out of the conveyor design. It's a challenge, isn't it? Because you want to use it to add it strength and mm-hmm. it is a challenge, but we're we're pretty good at yeah, it. Yeah, we're getting good at it. Yeah. Yeah. And we're getting things kind of figured out. Yeah. I noticed you did a lot of what is it when you you bend the metal, what do you call that? Forming it. Forming it. You mm-hmm. um what when I watched you had a lot of forming mm-hmm. they and I I assume that was giving it structural integrity exactly. and quality yep. to it. Yep. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah you bend it. So the legs that we made for a lot of our conveyors now are, we cut it flat pattern and we can put the holes, you know, if it does get bolted with spacers, when it's bent, bend it into a channel and it's really strong. It's pretty strong. Yeah. It's and a good way to go. So it's got a lightweight and strong mm-hmm. if you're taking a lot of that off. So. And you can wash through it, clean it. Excellent. Okay, Chad, tell us where we're at. So we're at Industrial Metal Enterprises in Blackford, Idaho. Okay. Commonly known as IME. IME. So look for the IME signs on all this. That's right. IME. And uh, we'll 
will make your job easier. Okay, thank you guys. I would like to thank Chad and Steve for visiting with me today about angle versus tubing when it comes to food processing equipment. They are extremely knowledgeable. If you need more information, please reach out to Chad at Industrial Metal Enterprises in Blackfoot, commonly known as IME. Next topic will be the machinery we use in order to create sanitary food processing equipment. So stay tuned for that. These guys have a tremendous amount of knowledge and they will be giving you some valuable information when it comes to sanitary design for food processing equipment and the machinery we use. Thanks and we'll talk to you next time.